I recently spent a ton of time making this painted style cinematic, designing, modeling, shading, and animating. I spent many hours crafting a way to make my own 31 second piece from scratch. And in this video, I'll walk you through the whole process, from ideation to the final product. But before we begin, every great work of art starts with an idea, as I love to say. So, to get started with the idea, I first had to think quite a lot. We have a black cat around here, or at least when my sister visits frequently, so I was thinking something with a black cat and a girl character would make sense. Where she picks up the cat and then something funny happens towards the end. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that's the only idea I had at first, and I did a lot of improvised planning once I actually started making the scenes, so when we get to that, I'll explain my thought process a bit more there. But, before we can even make anything here, the first thing I had to do was actually make the character in the first place. I have a whole other longer video about me designing and making this character, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet here. First thing I did starting out was designing her face, beginning from a base mesh that I modeled previously. Overall, my goal here was just to give the face an initial block out. I decided to give her curly hair here because I hadn't made curly hair in a while and I really like the way that it looks. So, I drew a lot of streaks to kind of replicate that curly look. With that blocked out, I wanted to make her body. I decided I wanted to be wearing a nice elegant outfit of a jacket and a skirt, so I got to work on creating an attire like that. I started out by blocking the jacket as well as the skirt afterwards, and that gave me a base. I then had to make the folds and all of that good stuff. As usual, just beveling and puffing out edges. With that done, I moved on to texturing and just gave the model whatever cool detail I could to make it look as good as possible. This included a lot of scratches, folds, and edge highlighting, <laughs> which resulted in a pretty nice look overall. I then just added some accessories like a necklace, a belt, leggings as well and just other various details. From there, I just added some adjustable lighting to the character, and then was basically done after just rigging everything up. Now, with our glorious character made, which by the way, I still have no name for her, so comment below what you think her name should be, it's now time to create our first scene. To start it out, I just first placed a couple of planes in the scene for the ground and the wall. I gave the background a nice orange color, and the floor a beige color. I added in a cube as well to see how the shadows were looking so far, and just to place the scene into context a bit better. Now, to get the foliage shadow effect going, I added in some foliage I made previously and just added it into the scene like this. Everything overall looks bland right now, so let's add in a cube to cast a large shadow on the left side, thus making the lighting more interesting. Things overall still look pretty flat, so I added in some gradients to make it more dynamic looking as well as adding in a stylized grunge effect with the stylized asset suite add-on, which by the way is an add-on that lets you texture and get the power of shaders without actually touching the node editor that much. But anyways, after that, I then added in some loop cuts to make the wall more like a grid, so that I could extrude back and kind of just create an opening in the wall, which overall just made this area a little more interesting in the center. With that being done, I realized the floor looked very bland, so an awesome way to get some easy detail would be to use tiles, so I decided to do that. I played around with their size and shape and everything, and overall just gave it a nice varied look so that it didn't look totally perfect and a bit messed up. I then added in some rocks using geometry nodes as well as grass afterwards to make the ground a lot more realistic. And in the back I made sure it was a little more dense so that it blended with the wall nicely. I then started adding a bunch of leaf models that I made to the top left side so that they'd cast a shadow down onto the wall. Okay, so now at this point we have something nice, but especially on the wall it just lacks any character. So now what I wanted to do was draw a bunch of grunge scratches and marks all over the place. I also highlighted the edges of these tiles, which I actually realized now I did in the wrong direction. It should have been on the left side and on the right side, so whoops, but I mean it's okay because no one really noticed. And after a few more details, we now have something that's pretty solid. So at this point, I just slowed down the pace a bit and worked more on the smaller details that add up. With the background mostly made, now it's time for a bigger challenge to tackle. Bringing in the character, matching its colors to the environment, and thinking about starting the animation. I just had to brighten the highlights on the character quite a lot and kind of match it better with the overall environment of the scene. And with that, the block out of the scene was done. When it comes to animation, and first thinking of what to make to be honest, I had to create a block and just couldn't really figure out what I wanted to make at the time. So I had to persevere. I knew I wanted a cat and this girl character to interact, but just couldn't think of a beginning. 
To fix this, I scrolled through Pinterest a lot, and ultimately I decided I wanted her to do sort of a back twirl, and then sort of stumble into her cat. Now for animating this scene, I decided to work with another artist I know who also does animations to save some time. I gave him a reference, and he did the initial blocking out for this shot. After he blocked it out, I then polished it up a lot more and made it flow better overall, and feel more realistic with the scene that I was doing. We then both added in some final touches, and had a pretty cool result. That being said though, in the end, I decided to make it so that she sets up a tripod at the beginning to give it better context overall, and that was that for scene 1. Okay guys, before we go any further, I just want to talk a little bit about my masterclass. If you're someone who's been trying to learn Blender but doesn't have a clear path, this is a program that will teach you my entire workflow for making things like anime style characters, beautiful scenes, and just amazing stylized art in general. It's one of the only comprehensive curriculums on this that exists, and is suitable both for beginners as well as people who are more experienced and want to level up their stylized art skills, or just become a better 3D artist in general. We focus both on technical skills as well as observational skills, meaning technical skills as in how to use Blender efficiently, as well as the observational skills of design and stuff like that, because without that, your art is going to look flat no matter how well you can use Blender. So if you're interested in joining me and hundreds of other students, you can check it out on ukiogirls.io. Okay, back to the video. Okay, now for scene 2, I actually have another video I recently released talking a lot about this scene and tips on visual development to improve the look of your guys' art. So I highly recommend you check that out, you'll learn a lot. Also, I made this cat model a while ago, you can check it out in this video and even download it for free. But anyways, as you can see here, I was just initially filling in details, adding in some foliage shadows, some details to the tiles as well like you're seeing me do here, adding in other debris like wood chips and leaves, and to sharpen things up, I added in some black outlines as well. To make the scene more whole and realistic, I added a rim light to the cat as well, and I made sure to give it an orange tint so that it would match to the environment well. And finally, I used some compositing effects to play around with the lens distortion and glare and all of that good stuff. And now we have a great base for scene 2. For animating, since the movement of the cat was quite limited for this scene, I decided to animate on threes, meaning every three frames has a new pose. It's better to just do it this way for scenes that don't have as much movement, so that you can save time. I watched videos of cats meowing and kinda just put a few of them together to use as a reference for this, and it was pretty quick overall to do. Okay, now for scene three. Basically, for this scene, it was just the same as scene 1, but with the camera rotated. Obviously, I moved some stuff around like these leaves on the side that I'm playing with, and I also extended the orange wall and put some other various accessories in the back right here just to fill the space. And those were really the main changes for scene 3. Regarding animation, I acted this one out as well, and then got to making it in Blender. Overall, I wanted her to first give a cute expression and then tell the cat to come afterwards. So the first step was to put her hands on her face like I'm doing here, which can be a little tricky for something like this where the hands and the face are interacting. It required a lot of care to say the least. And then after that, she points to the cat and basically signals for the cat to come. Obviously, while all this was happening, I played around with the shape keys that I made for this model, such as the smiling and mouth closing, and the A-E-I-O-U vowel poses that I made for this character. So I put all of this together, and once I was almost done with the animation, I then just had to fix up the positioning of the hair a little bit so that it didn't intersect with the clothes. Lastly, I experimented with having the text of her talking on screen. While this was a cool idea, it unfortunately just didn't look that good and was a bit hard to follow, so I decided to discard it and just keep it blank. Okay, now for scene 4, overall at least for the scene creation part, there's not much to say here, because it's basically just the same as scene 1 except zoomed in a bit. Of course, I did some extra detailing since now we're zoomed in more on the shot, but besides that, it wasn't anything too different. I just copied and pasted in the rest of the props and accessories for scene 1 that I had, and that was the bulk of it for creating scene 4. Now, for animation on scene 4, I wanted her to pick up the cat and do a sort of flip-flop towards the end. I actually just used the initial footage I shot for inspiration as my guide for this, and just got to animating. Obviously here, it was a bit of extra work as I had to also animate the cat as well, and both of them interacting, but the extra difficulty here also made it feel more rewarding in the end. Here on the channel guys, we really believe persevering through making your art is super important. Alright, so now with the scenes basically done, it was time for some final touches. If you saw my last video where I talk about important visual development tips, I basically just apply those tips here and make each scene a bit more good looking. I played around with the compositing quite a lot for each scene, adjusting things like contrast and glare, and in scene 4, I felt that tilting the camera down a bit 
made the scene as a whole look a bit nicer. And of course, I just spent a while staring at my screen making tiny adjustments. Okay, so now, without further ado, here's our final result. Okay, so that's a wrap. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. I have plenty of other art and animation content coming up soon, so definitely subscribe and you can also follow me on Instagram here. Okay, have an awesome day!